Bismillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah. My dear brothers and my sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. Today I had a conversation with few people in regards to magic, evil eye, envy. And it seems that this is a problem in the Muslim community. I remember a few months ago I was given a talk before Ramadan when a young man approached me and he wanted my help in helping him find out what it is that is wrong with him. I asked him the question, what do you think is wrong with you? He goes, I believe I have magic or envy against me. And I said, huh, what makes you believe that? And then he gave me a few pointers. And uh, later on, only to find out later on that this gentleman here has nothing of that sort of things. And it was only his way of looking at things. He was bullied when he was a little kid. So it was more of an emotional or mental blocks that he had in mind. And uh, we will see later on why he went on and watched the whole thing on magic and envy. Another couple, for instance, they went through a lot of problems and the woman has been victim to her uh, husband. And uh, when they went to a sheikh, also called sheikh, he straight away dumped on the account of magic and that they had sihr done onto them. That's why the marriage is not working. Only later on, when I worked with them, I found out that the lady has been abused so countlessly that she had uh, enough. And before that, another couple also the same thing, where the husband has been cheating on the wife, and when she found out, she had a nervous breakdown, and uh, then later on, they went to a sheikh against sihr. Somebody else couldn't find a job, no matter how much he applied for a job, he could never find a job. Again, blame it on sihr. But when we worked together, and I helped him polish his uh, CV, and helped him uh, improve his English, he got a job. And another lady who didn't get married because she is also under the influence of sihr only later on to find out that she was extremely fat and she was not actually very smart. So as you can see, and I can go on and on in my 30 years experience with people and in this matter of da'wah, I have seen enough to actually when somebody comes to me, 99.99% it is not sihr. But so why do people always resort to sihr? Well, it's because every time somebody fails, they blame it on an external factor. They cannot blame the community. They cannot blame anyone else. They just turn to sihr. But uh, is this practice common like throughout our history from the time of Rasulullah and in his time until today? Is it something that is common, happens a lot? Well, you'll be surprised by that it's not true. Sihr, magic, envy, and all these things happen only when ignorance thrives and when charlatans thrive as well. People that make money out of it. About uh, 27 years ago, a lot of people, because my name is Abu Hanifa, they think I am somebody else whose name is Abu Hanifa who does Ruqya. So a lot of people contact me hoping that I would give them an appointment to give them Ruqya. Well, for me, it's really a short way to make money but i ain't gonna do it and i know the gentleman that i talk about and he used to be once one of my friends and still today uh, respect but every time i see him i always remind him that what he's doing is wrong and he knows my point of view on this issue here today a lady calls me from some part of england and uh, she straight away introduces herself as the mother of XYZ. And I go, excuse me, I don't know who you're referring to. And she goes, you made Ruqya on my daughter years back in time. And I tried to contact you, but it's not possible to get through to you. And I told her that you must be confusing me to somebody else. But she kept insisting that it was me. And then it dawned on me, uh-huh, it's Abu Hanifa again, the name. And she was explaining to me that she brought her daughter when she was 16 years of age. And that is 10 years ago. So I asked her, and how is your daughter doing that? She says she is still suffering from sihr. So I told her, 10 years? She goes, yes. And I said, did you take her to any medical place or somewhere? Just they look at your daughter? She goes, well, the sheikh told her not to take, to stop taking medication. And uh, that because the English people do not understand the jinn and the possession, all that kind of stuff. And the lady has stopped giving medication to her daughter for 10 continuous years. The girl got married and after one month got divorced. 
Now, this is a really, really serious problem. So, but I don't want to get into too much details here and tell you how many people have actually done this because you know, and I get like so many people, do you do Ruqya? I have never, ever done it on anyone else. Never. And I don't believe in that because if you are a Muslim and you can recite the Quran, you can do it on yourself. You don't need to pay money to somebody else to do it on your behalf because that eats into your Tawheed as I will see that it is absolutely a very dangerous topic that a lot of people do not pay attention to, including the people who give the Ruqya. Also, Ruqya here, people like you book an appointment and you go pay 50 pounds or 50, whatever it is the amount that you pay, as the lady said to me. And then you go inside and the guy gives you one hour and then he's going to recite a few ayat here, there, and he's going to repetitively uh, do them. And the, the person, and I've heard people really telling me some really interesting stories. This gentleman tells me, oh, one day I gave Ruqya to this gentleman and the jinn started speaking from his uh, voice and he goes like this and he was talking to me. And I go, really? Another person, she goes, oh, you don't know when the jinn speaks through your voice and uh, what they say. And I go, okay. But actually there is all this manifestation where the jinn always speaks from your mouth. Now, I always tell them this thing here. So if I go now and commit fornication and people find me out is it an excuse to say that i was under the position of jinn when i am under the position i am possessed by jinns does allah hold me responsible for my evil acts or not like this lady here who wanted to kill herself if she managed to kill herself four times and she died is she gonna go to jannah because she did it the poor lady because she was under the influence of a shaitan well, actually, there is a reality that a lot of these claimant charlatans, I call them, I don't call them raqi or anything, as you will see, I call them charlatans. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explicitly said it in Surah Ibrahim alayhi as-salam. In ayah number 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, when people enter Jahannam, hellfire, and the gates are closed, a shaitan will stand right in the middle of hellfire and he will deliver a khutbah, a sermon that every single person in hellfire is going to hear it. And here is that topic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us beforehand. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ A shaitan spoke and said when the matter was decreed, i.e. the people of Jannah and Jannah and the people in hellfire are in hellfire. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you a promise of truth. And I promised you and I failed you. وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي And I had absolutely no power over you except that I invited you and you responded and you answered my invitation. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي Do not blame me. وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And blame only yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ I am not to save you from hellfire. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي And you are not going to save me from the punishment of Allah. إِنِّي كَفَرَتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ I disbelieve in everything you have associated me with before. I.e. any act of shirk that you committed. And today you blaming it for you committing it. I am actually innocent from it. Do not even turn to me or say anything about it. I am completely innocent. And then he said, Inna al-zalimina lahum azabun alim. The oppressors and the transgressions and people who wrong themselves, they certainly have the burst of punishments. This is what Allah says about the shaitan. Pay attention. He said, Innama da'awtukum fastajabtum li. I only invited you and you obeyed me. He didn't say I entered in you and drove you like a car. He didn't say I possessed you and did in you everything that you did. He didn't say any of that kind of stuff. The whole matter of the matter was he invited you and you responded to that. When you go to these people that give the ruqya, what do they say? They call it a ruqya shara'iya, the Islamic ruqya. Well, actually, let me tell you something. There is a consensus amongst the scholar. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullah says, Inna al-ruqyata laysat ibadah. The ruqya is not an act of worship. 
بل هو علاج وطب مثل جميع أنواع الطب البدني it is a treatment and a disease uh, cure just like any other animal that you go and see the doctor that's it the ruqya is not an act of worship it's just like when you take paracetamol you read Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make the Quran a cure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Quran as a cure just like paracetamol is a cure just like uh, any medic, uh, medicines that you take as a cure if someone thinks because reciting the Quran or the, the Quran itself cures they are associating with Allah because the only one only one the only one to provide the cure and gives you the shifa is Allah nobody else this is why al ulama our scholars have agreed unanimously that the reciter i.e. the one who recites the Quran and the sick person they both must be 100% sure that it's neither the recitation of the man nor the quality or the quantity of the Quran that he recites are the cure so why do you go then and see these charlatans do they tell you these kind of things Look, these people here what they do is to get more client they exaggerate their results they boost to no end I've seen the jinni speak a lot of people they tell me the jinn until today I still haven't seen the jinn wallahi al-azim I haven't seen the jinn in fact Imam Malik rahmatullah, he used to dislike and he said the person who claims are possessed by jinn or are doing things because of the jinn the jinn they must be slapped with no mercy they say he says because I would hate and this is again a, a matter of the school of thoughts they agree on this point here they would hate that a woman gets fornicates get pregnant and she says it's a jinn who made me pregnant and I've, I know these people I'm married to a jinn really who told you that what evidence do we have against this charlatanism and those lies my dear brothers and my sisters anywhere any person that you see it, and look at it if someone tells you I am possessed you can rest assured they are totally ignorant in Islam they have no idea what Islam is all about and Islam didn't come to tell us that the jinn is going to possess us when a shaitan on the day of al qiyamah as it is in the Quran says Innama da'awtukum fastajabtum li. the whole thing that I did was just I gave you an invitation and you came to me he didn't get into you he cannot control you from internally why would you go to a shaitan it's because you have a business and it's not working people pay thousands upon thousands upon millions for business studies and you want to wing it like a cowboy and be successful if you my sister you don't find a husband is that because it's a magic are you so famous are they gonna subhanallah superstars anywhere else and it's they, nobody does magic look my dear brothers and my sisters wake up why can't we apply magic and become president of the United States? Why Muslims don't do that? Why don't we have a good Muslim person that applies magic and insources all the people and then he gets a president? And then what's Why can't we do magic against the rich people and take their money? The person who does magic, why can't they become rich themselves? Why this Raqi here, this man who is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why can't he just subhanallah please my dear brothers and my sisters now let me tell you something about the person who recites for your information there is nothing called a ruqya shara'iyya there is nothing it's a lie it's a fab it's a fade it's a myth because anytime when you recite al-quran that's it or the dua that's it so the ruqya when you go to a person the very first thing that they gotta tell you is that I guarantee you nothing at all. One. Two. The money they ask for is not permitted to them. Because in Islam there is a topic in the payments. Al-Ujra is when you pay somebody a fee for what they do. Al-Ji'ala is when it's a commission. You tell the person, you do that. If I get this result, I give you some money. And you don't set how much. On that agreement, the reciter starts reciting Al-Quran. 
If you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cured you, you give him a donation, not a set 50 pounds that you pay in advance and you get a receipt for it. That's what charlatanism is. That's what business making is. This is what I call them making repeat business is. I uh, know somebody who used to work in a Ruqya center. And uh, one day I told him, and his sister also as well, and when I told him it's not permissible, stop this kind of charlatanism and selling Allah's religion short, he told me, Abu Hanifa, the only people who got cured were the people who never returned there. Because when you go to this Raqi, what he tells, he says, Quran, la, 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 and then he tells you, well, you're going to feel good, but you need 10 sessions. How can you claim that? How can you claim that? Knowing that neither you nor me nor anyone else on earth can claim that the ruqya is what brings the news that you are going to be cured. It doesn't happen like that. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim where Rasulullah sallallahu says, لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَىٰ For every disease is a cure, is a medication. فَإِذَا أَصَابَ دَوَاءُنِ الدَّاءِ If a medication hits by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, the disease, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, bari abi idhni Allah azza wa jal. The person finds the cure by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permission, and this is in Muslim. What this means is, when you are sick, let's, we're going to just take the example, you have a flu, a cold, and you go and you get the lamb sip, and you do the lemon and honey. Everyone would tell you to do that. Well, actually, the, you do that, but, here is what the problem is. If you believe that by drinking that drink, you're going to feel better, you have made shirk. A lot of Muslims do that. A lot of Muslims do that. It's because when you take that drink with the honey and the lemon, you're going to feel good. Nobody invites Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the equation. When in fact, when you drink the lemon and the honey and the lamb sip and all that kind of stuff, if that what you're drinking has been as Rasulullah says, made to cure your disease, then Allah will give you the cure, not what you do. There is no amount of Quran that you are going to read. There is, that's why when, when we speak to people in the Quran, when they tell me, I tell them the whole of the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it as a cure or part of the cure, amongst other things. There is no, and when you go to these people, the Ruqya Sharia, they will keep reciting, Ayat al Kursi, Qul Wallah, Qul Adu Barb Faqul, these things, and isolating the rest of the Quran, when in fact they have no authority to do that at all, or the Fatiha, things like that. My dear brothers and my sisters, a lot of the people that you pay the money to take the jinn, <laughs> to take the jinn out of you, are actually taking your money away. Here is an experiment that they did uh, in the West. There is this experiment where they want to try how, especially it's done in psychology, and it's called the placebo test, whereby they bring some people that have a disease, or for example, some muscles growth, or anywhere where they need to see a difference of results. They bring, let's say, 10 people or 20 people, 10 of them, they give them the medication, and the other 10, they give them a look-alike medication, but absolutely no effects at all. And they mix the groups, and to you, you've got absolutely the same thing. It's a medicine. And they give it to people, and to a staggering, staggering results. They found that everybody feels good, even though 10 people had the real medicine, and the other 10 had a placebo, i.e. a fake medicine. And they found out that the brain is so powerful that it actually can fake sickness and it can also fake unsickness. So to me, when you come to me and it says this, just by the fact I, oh, I am possessed, really possessed, you think you are, that's it, you have become a BMW and your gene is inside you sitting and uh, <laughs> kind of like he sleeps, he does what he wants and things like that. No, it doesn't happen like that. And then I, when I read the Qur'an, uh, he listens to my Qur'an. And uh, you, when you recite Qur'an by yourself, the Qur'an that is inside you is not affecting him. And you just need someone from the external to read it on you. Is this how your Islam is really strong? And before you get me wrong, al-jinn and al-shaytan, they can penetrate us. For example, if you yawn and you don't put your hand, and you, shaytan will enter inside you. But there is a difference between entering inside a body, which they can do, and 
controlling and possessing the body which they cannot do. I'll say again. Entering inside you, they can. Possessing your body, controlling it, driving it like you would drive a car, they cannot do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in endless ayat in the Quran has told a shaitan that illa ibadi falaysa laka alayhim min sultan. You have no ability, no power, no authority over those subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's your ignorance that is possessing you, not a shaitan. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I will cover this again in my topic about the jinn and the shaitan that I'm speaking about, but this is just a pep talk to tell you that a lot of people out there are charlatans, they're just taking your money, they just repeat business for them, and that's what it is. And again, it's not a wages you pay them that they read the Quran, it's al-ji'ala, al-ji'ala is a commission. Meaning you take the child to him, they recite the Quran, whatever it is. If Allah has written that you get cured, then you give them an amount of money, not a set fees. Those charlatans today, they are lying. And I've no, I know people can't even recite Quran properly. But again, people want to hear that by recite, oh, I've been to this Raqi and he read on me and I feel better. Allah, you don't feel no better, nothing at all. It's just all is in your head. If you feel and you believe you are a loser in your mind, you will be a loser. If you find in your mind that you are a powerful people, intelligent, then you will be like that. Allah has made this brain extremely powerful and it will yield unbelievable results depending on how you use that brain. So please, 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 please stop thinking you're possessed. Stop thinking you have magic on you. Stop you wasting way too much uh, thinking about the envy and black eye and pink eye and the green eye than being the positive person, the successful person. I like when somebody says today, the Muslim ummah on earth is wasting way too much time worried about the envy and magic and the black uh, evil eye than actually doing the act for which they should be envied, for which they should be stopped by magic. And it's true. You've got nothing and who's gonna, subhanAllah, who's gonna waste their time possessing you and doing that? And also, if I was a jinn, I would not want to possess the body of a loser Muslim who doesn't even know how to pray properly. And as I said in my poster before, Al-Jinn, why don't they give you a lot of money so that you fornicate and you take drugs and you do that? Why do they go just to the broke people and waste their time with them? Why can't they, for example, go and possess the president of Egypt or Algeria or Saudi Arabia? Because when they possess these people, the impact is far bigger. Well, actually, they only possess the people who are ignorant. And I pray to Allah that you are not one of these people. Again, if you have any questions about this charlatanism or this jinn or things like that, call me. I can change your mind by Allah because it's just the way you think that is crooked. You actually get, don't get possessed and nothing at all. And whoever tells you that, these are myths and stories. As I said, the jinn can't enter in us, but can they possess us and do as they please? Of course not. For every human, there are at least four angels. So you, you kind of like you have four angels, you don't trust in them and you just get scared of the jinn. Hello, wake up before it's too late. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. My telephone number is 078 To join my group, just send me a message with your name, please. Or you can go on YouTube and look for Islam Pep Talk and uh, at gmail.com that's my email and send me messages and emails and inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'll do my best to get back to you on time wa salli allahumma ala nabiyina muhammad subhanak allahumma bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh